Welcome back to the Making a Pong course. This is Jonathan here, and we have a fully functional uh, Pong game at this point. Well, almost fully functional. Uh, there is one thing. We don't have a win or lose condition. And I noticed here on this ponggame.org, which I showed in the very first video, it says the first player to get 10 points will win the game. Now, I don't know if this is the rules for Pong in general or just this version of it, but that does seem like a good rule to follow. So we'll set the uh, win or lose conditions here at 10 points. Now we already have a score manager, so it seems like a logical place to determine the scoring within this script. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a public integer. We're going to call this score to beat, and by default we're going to make it equal to 10. Now under the increased player score, we're just going to say if player score is equal to score to beat, then, uh, well, we'll handle the then in a bit, but for now we're just going to comment and say load win scene, and similarly we're going to drag this down here and change player score to computer score, and instead of loading a win scene we'll say load lose scene. So nice and simple. Now, we haven't actually dealt with different scenes yet. So far, we've just been playing within this game scene where we've actually designed our Pong game. So how do we go about creating additional scenes? Well, first of all, I'm going to navigate to my scene folder. And don't need this test script. I'm just going to get rid of that. Now, if I go create over here, and I can go down to scene, and that lets us create a new scene. And I'm just going to type main menu. So that's one way to create a new scene. Uh, another way is to go to File and select New Scene, and then hit Control S or Command S on a Mac and save your new scene. Well, I'm just going to do that and type Win. And a third way is to duplicate an existing scene, which you click the scene you want to duplicate, and you press Control D, and then you just rename it to whatever you want. OK, so that's great. We've created some additional scenes. I'm going to go back to our game scene now. And if we look under our score manager, uh, the score to beat, well, by default here, I should actually say 10, but by default I want it to just say 1, and that's just for testing purposes, because if I test to see if we can load scenes with it being 10 points, that's just going to take too long. So uh, right now we, we haven't actually typed any code. So let's talk about how to load additional scenes. And for that we have to use something called the Scene Manager. Now this is new for the most recent versions of Unity. Uh, there was a different method of doing this before. Uh, but for using the scene manager, you have to type using Unity Management at the very top of your script. So if you remember, we do something similar for this whenever we're using a canvas. Uh, and we have to type using Unity Engine.ui. Well, that's quite similar. And once you've done this, then you can access the scene manager to navigate between scenes. So it's pretty much as simple as that. Okay, so let's go into this uh, score manager script, and at the very top here, we're going to type using Unity Engine dot Scene Management, and that will now allow us to access the Scene Manager. And it, rather here than typing load win scene, well, I can just leave that in. Go underneath that and type Scene Manager dot load scene open bracket, and in here, if you can see in the tooltip, it's saying string scene name. A string is a text element, so I'm going to do open quotation mark, and I call the, the uh, win scene just win. And quite similarly here, under the other one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to type scene manager dot load scene lose. Now, let's test this out and see what happens if I let the computer score on me. And you're going to see nothing happens. And that's because we're getting an error here saying that the scene cannot be loaded because it hasn't been added to the build settings. So what that means is whenever you create scenes in Unity, you have to go here under File, Build Settings, and add them in manually in order to load them. And to do that, it's quite simple. You just drop and drag them in. And you put them in the order they appear logically in the game. So it, and it's quite easy to reorder. In this case, Main Menu should actually come before the game. And then it really doesn't matter if you're going to have the win or lose scenes next, but just make sure they're all in there. Now, if we test this out and uh, we let the computer score on us, 
there we go. We can see it loads the uh, loose scene in this case. So that is pretty cool. Now, what about if we want to go from our main menu to our game scene, and we want to control when that happens? Well, let's take a look. Let's hop over to this main menu scene and uh, start to design it. Well, first of all, I'm going to change the color of the main camera to that uh, same black, because that default blue is quite ugly. And now we're going to go game object, UI, and text, and that's going to create a text element by default. And I'm just going to call this text header, and I'm going to type in here, Welcome to Pong. Now you can't see anything yet because of the way the canvas appears by default. You can see it's uh, quite large. Uh, th this is just the mode it's on. But for simplicity right now, I want to use, uh, so if I want to click on the canvas and go screen space camera, and then we're going to drag our main camera into the render camera, and that's going to make it the same size as our uh, scene. Now, if we change our UI scale mode to scale with screen size, we can just change that to expand. And this is just going to make sure that if we expand or shrink the screen, it's going to all appear roughly the right size. So here's our text. Uh, it's too small and too dark to actually see right now, uh, but we'll take care of that in a second. I, I, I'm using shortcut keys to just click between these different elements up here at the top, but you can click on them manually. This one expands the actual sort of canvas size of the text. Now if I can scale that size up, make this actually a whole lot bigger. I'm gonna put that in the center. I'm gonna center the text. I'm gonna change its color to white. And I'm gonna change its uh, font from Arial to this retro we downloaded and make it even bigger. Welcome to Pong. There we go. Now I feel welcome. And now I'm gonna go under game uh, sorry, game object, yes, game object UI, and add a button. And the button is what we're going to click to actually start our game. So similarly, I'm going to make this button bigger. And I don't like this default white, so I'm just going to go into color, and I'm going to lower the alpha to make that invisible. And if we click this drop down arrow underneath the button, we have another text element, and I'm just going to do the same sort of thing that I did for the previous one. Uh, make it bigger, change it to say start game, change its font from Arial to Retro. There we go, looking better already. And we can just rename this button also start the game button. Okay, now by itself, that won't do anything. So what we're going to do is create a level manager script. And for to do this, I'm going to go under game object, create empty, reset that position, and we're going to rename this level manager. And now we're going to give it its own script. So I'm going to type here, a level man, it's already typed. I, the reason some of this stuff is uh, had default values already is because I recorded this video once and then I realized I didn't have my microphone volume turned on, so there was no audio. So this is my second time doing this video. So we're just going to go here and create level manager, create and add, and that's going to create the default script here in the main assets folder. So I'm going to drag that into my scripts folder, and now we're going to open this up. So right here at the top, we're going to type using Unity Engine dot scene management and we don't need any of these defaults here but what I'm going to do is type public void and it's very important to get the word public in here I'll show you why in a second public void load uh, next or load new scene open bracket string name open close curly brackets and now in here, we're going to type scene manager dot load scene, and we're going to load whatever is this string, this string name. Now let me explain this to you in a little more detail. Uh, and it's going to be easier to do that with a visual. If we look here on our button and scroll down to the bottom of the button, it has this thing that says on click. Well, what is that? Well, if we click the plus sign underneath, it's going to ask us to bring in an object. Now, if we drag the level manager from our hierarchy and drag it on here, 
we can go to this no function and select our level manager and select this method we just created, which is load new scene. And if you did not type the word public, this would not appear in this list. So that's why it's important to have the word public. Now we can actually type the name of our scene as we created it. So in my case, my, def my game scene is called game and yours should probably be called the same, but in case you call it something different, you want to make sure you type exactly what this scene is called into here. It is case sensitive, so just be aware of that. Now, if we click play, we should be able to just start our game by clicking the start game button. And there we have it, it works. And we already know that uh, this works, it, lo it lo loads our lose scene. Of course, our lose scene and our win scene are both empty right now. And I'm going to leave that to you as a challenge to you. Design, go ahead and design your own win scene and lose scene. You can make it much more advanced than the one I did there if you want. And then add two buttons to each scene. One button will be a restart that uh, just brings the game back to the game scene. And the other button will take you back to the main menu. Now, as a hint, you can take this level manager we just created, turn it into a prefab, and then drag it and reuse it in the win and lose scenes. So you shouldn't need to create any additional scripts. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. How'd you do? Figure it out? So let's take a look at my solution. Well, I already know this main menu is and the lose scene and win scenes are going to be quite similar. So I'm just going to delete this lose scene and win scene I've already created. And uh, I'm going to remove them from the build settings. And now I'm just going to duplicate my main menu and I'm going to call this win. And now I'm going to go into it and I'm just going to change a few things around. Instead of saying, welcome to Pong, I'm going to say, congrats, you win. And instead of it saying start game and being called start game button, we're going to call it restart game button. And I'm going to change its text to read play again. And now I'm going to duplicate this button and we're going to move it down underneath and we are going to type on here uh, main menu button and change its text element to say main menu. And under on the button itself, it already says game. But in this case, I just want this to go back to the main menu. And if I hit play, I can test that out and basically navigate back to the main menu. So that's great. Uh, next, now I, I know my lose scene is going to be even more similar to this. So I'm just going to duplicate this win scene again, change it to say lose, and go back here. And uh, oops, did I duplicate the wrong scene? I probably duplicated the wrong scene. I did. So I'm going to duplicate my win scene. Oops. Go away, bad lose scene. I don't want you. Okay. Now I am going to duplicate my win scene, change this to lose, and right here, change the text to say. Oh no, you lost. And I can just leave it saying play again or main menu because those are basically uh, the exact same. So there we go. I have my win scene, I have my lose scene, I have my game scene. One more thing we'll do uh, just because I'm going to add a quit button. So if I go here under start game and duplicate this, put this underneath, we can say quit game button. And now I'm going to go back into the script and I'm going to type public void quit game. And here we're just going to type application dot quit. And actually in Unity, this doesn't really do anything, uh, at least not in the test. Oops, don't need to type a level. We need to change our function to quit game and need to change the text here to say quit. So if we test it, this, this won't do anything here. 
It looks blank. However, if I put a print statement, you would see that it is rec recognizing it. It's just you can't really quit from the editor, so you're not seeing anything. But it does add a quit button, which just gives one more thing to click on. Anyways, that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you understood everything. Please let me know if you had any questions. Take care and see you in the next one.